let me just draw this cash flow diagram again because this is one of those things okay you got to get the you got to get the idea of this if if i invest in a project that gives me $2500 at the beginning i pay out 12500 at time t equal to 1 and then i receive 15000 at time t equal to 2 Let's step through this in real life in, let's say, the, the, the chief financial officer's desk at the company. Okay, so just imagine that we, we take on this project and $2,500 comes into the company. Now, yeah, someone has already kind of alluded to, the, to where I'm going what happens to the $2,500 when it comes into the company? What happens to it? I mean, I, I mean, maybe, maybe we just buy like a big company lunch or something like that. But no, yeah, the answer is yes, we, we would invest it. And picking up on what we talked about with incremental IRR, what would be a reasonable assumption in terms of what our rate of return might be onto this windfall of cash that came out of nowhere. Yes, someone again has said exactly right, the MAR. So, so let's think about this. We could, we could say, okay, we get a positive cash flow at time t equal to zero, and then we could invest it at the MAR. So we can take this cash flow forward at the MAR. There's no unknown interest rate, there's just an assumption. And it's a reasonable one to assume that that $2,500 goes into the investment pot and that that money is now available for other investments in the company. And it's a reasonable assumption to say, hey, we're going to assume we're going to at least earn, at least earn the MAR. We're going to assume we do earn the MAR for that amount of money. Now we can take that forward in time and figure out what dollar amount we would have at time t equal to one. And then we could take the net cash flow at time t equal to one, because now we would have those two cash flows at the same point in time. And then what we would end up with is a cash flow diagram that all of a sudden looks like a simple investment, which should have one root. Right, so so um, so that's it. That's the trick. Now, there's a, a few little nuances to this, and um, there is something called the exact ERR, right? And we'll call this. This is this is actually what we call ERR, and the reason we call it ERR is because the E now stands for the word external. And the reason we use the word external is because this money is now outside of the project, right? So, so when we look at evaluations of IRR, IRR stands for internal rate of return, where internal rate of return means inside the project, just in the project. ERR, on the other hand, means we, we assume we take money out of the project. So we're getting a rate of return that includes things external to the project. And the finance world and engineering economics call that the ERR. And really, it's just a technique for dealing with this situation where a project generates positive cash flows before it's done. And hence, produces these non-simple investments, which produce multiple IRRs. Now, there are two versions of ERR, and we'll get into them when I go back to the slides. One of them is something called the exact ERR. And the exact ERR is where you actually step through the timeline, the cash flow diagram, and you actually move the positive cash flows ahead to time t equal to one, then take the net, then solve for an IRR. That's called the exact ERR. 
There's also something called the approximate ERR, which turns out to be a little bit easier to, to, to calculate. Uh, and that is where we take the we take any positive cash flows that come out of the project and we move them all forward to the end of the project at the MAR. And, and then we calculate uh, an IRR and we are an, we, an, an ERR, we call it the approximate ERR. And the reason that's the approximate ERR is because it doesn't do the individual calculations year by year in terms of the net cash flows that occur every year. And you can imagine if a project has you know, many years and many different positive cash flows, that could get a little bit tedious to figure out you know, what's the net cash flows the whole way along and um, it could just be a bit cumbersome. What it turns out that if we do this approximate ERR analysis where we take all of the positive cash flows forward at the MAR, uh, when we calculate the, the, that approximate ERR, it will always be less than the uh, exact ERR, meaning if we're using the approximate ERR to make decisions, the uh, approximate ERR will, will always give us a conservative uh, number for the ERR, meaning it will always be less than the exact ERR. Um, which is good for decision making, and it's also good because it's an easier way to calculate. Okay, so so um, so those are the two types of ERRs. That's the kind of thinking behind ERR, and I hope that that helps you uh, solve problems that are of an ERR nature, uh, which would have multiple roots if they were done as purely an IRR.